morning hillside family and friends i am delighted to be with you today it's always the highlight of my day and my week when i spend some time with the people that i cherish and love so dearly i speak god's continued blessing on you and may he continue to bless you as we open the rich wonders of his word today last week you'll remember we started speaking about the life of a man who was not very content in fact he was so discontent that he caused upheaval in his family he robbed his brother of a blessing he left his uh, home he was forced to leave his home because of the upheavals he went into a foreign land i'm not going to repeat everything go and check out last week's message uh, if you haven't seen it already perhaps you need to just recap on some of the things because today we're continuing with the study in the life of jacob who was one of the three great patriarchs of israel abraham isaac and jacob and so last week we spoke about how jacob was returning back home and how he was going to meet his brother who i believe was still ready and very fierce and ready to meet him with much violence but uh, we started speaking last week about a few different dynamics and we left off how jacob had been camped by the river jabbok and how he had sent everything ahead of him but he was alone but yet again we need to ask ourselves was he manahem remember the principle manahem how god overshadows there were two camps it wasn't just jacob and his family but god had his camp as well overshadowing jacob's camp i want to tell you it's not just you and your household wherever you are god has a camp as well you are overshadowed by god but yet jacob must have felt very very much alone sent his wife and family and all that he had ahead of him over the river and there he was but you know i think of uh, the psalmist and he was often felt very alone too like the rest of us there are times in life where we feel isolated there are times in life i mean talk about social distancing hey there are times that we feel absolutely alone and you know you can be in a room full of people and still feel alone sometimes people just don't get it they just don't understand where you are they don't understand the things that you're going through perhaps the burdens that you're carrying maybe, maybe it's just a mindset or a heaviness that's come upon you and you feel so alone what about the psalmist david now he was a man who was a man after god's own heart he was the king of 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 the empire he was the king of the kingdom of of israel in its golden age some people say solomon well, I don't know. I, I think David was perhaps the mightiest king of all. The golden age. Why? Because David followed God with more heart than Solomon ever did. And yet, David knew what it felt like to be alone. He, felt what it, he knew what it felt like to feel isolated. And here he was, a, a king with all his advisors and the priests and the prophets around him, temple worship, and he felt alone. And yet David could write in Psalm 139, he said where shall i go from your spirit or where shall i flee from your presence if i ascend to heaven you are there if i make my bed in sheol you are there if i if i take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me even there if you're feeling alone dear saint if you're feeling isolated perhaps feeling rejected i want to tell you we serve a god of even there in your depression he's even there in your loneliness he's even there in your confusion he's even there i want to tell you god is even there jesus continued to make the promise in matthew 28 verse 20 he's the one that said behold i am with you always to the end of the age that means you know even time will run out but god's presence with you never will jesus said behold i'm with you in other words you need to be able to see it it's there but sometimes you can't see it because your sights have been uh, or your sight has been overshadowed by so much negativity or perhaps by by the weightiness of your circumstances but if you just wade through that if you can behold it you will see that god is there he has never no never left you in fact that wonderful statement never no never in hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 uh, there the author of the book of hebrews uh, exhorts us he says keep your life free from the love of money oh gosh now we see how the 
the concept of contentment comes into this as well keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have for he has said who's he god for he has said i will never leave you nor forsake you and the construction there in the greek is very powerful in fact what it's saying is he's saying i will never no never no never leave you nor forsake you so if you're going through a jabbok experience right now if you feel like you've been stripped of everything if you feel like you're all alone i want to reassure you that god has promised you never no never no never will i leave you nor will i forsake you and so here was jacob all alone and he must have felt very alone indeed as well and yet he stayed there and i don't know what made jacob stay there i mean if you think about it why was it that he sent his family on ahead did he expect to have this encounter with god i don't know why did he send everybody ahead but he stayed behind did the lord perhaps put on his spirit uh, jacob send everybody ahead I-, I want to have a meeting with you i want to have an encounter we're going to have a bit of a wrestling match my boy i don't know the bible doesn't say but all we know is that jacob did it perhaps he stayed behind just because he needed a time of prayer and he didn't want to be distracted by the goings on of the household around him so here he was all alone he was a man who was very deeply distressed we dealt with this last week deeply distressed and then he arose and he got up and we hear then about a man that he met now here's the thing Jacob may have been in a situation where he needed comfort because think about what his mind was he's going to spend he's going to meet his brother he doesn't know I mean the very next day he could have been wiped out not just him but the wives that he loved and the precious little children that he had his brother was fully capable of wiping him out now now how would you want to be comforted in that time perhaps somebody to come to you put their arm around you and say hey man no man don't worry everything's going to be okay listen I, i'll phone ahead i'll speak to esau i'll speak to your brother I'll, I'll set the stage for you don't worry be okay don't worry about things man remember that the lord will be your shield and your buckler sometimes people can say all these things to you but it just seems that you're in a state where you can't quite accept it or receive it but yet you want to hear it anyway but here was jacob jacob may have wanted comfort but you know what he got instead conflict conflict there are times in your life where you want comfort and and you feel that you desperately desperately need it but you know god knows what you need and there are times in your life where god says to you come on man i don't need you to be sitting in a corner licking your we- your wounds i need you to come out swinging i need you to come out with the high praises of god upon your lips i need you to come out right now declaring those promises the devil thinks he's got you beaten but i need you to come out swinging right now i've invested more than enough in you i've given you tenacity i've given you the word and now to make you stronger i'm going to give you some conflict sometimes god sends people situations and circumstances in us in our lives to grow us up a little bit to toughen us up yes he's the god of all comfort but god knows when we need that comfort and when we need the conflict and whether it be by the whether it be by the method of comfort or whether it be by the method of conflict god knows what we need to restore us to that place of strength and health and a vigor see after their encounter jacob said i have seen god face to face so even though it was conflict the same god of comfort was the same god of the wrestling match and and and, and god knew what jacob needed at that stage was it god himself was it an angel or was it a man well the bible speaks in all three terms jacob said i have seen god face to face the prophet hosea speaks of jacob wrestling with an angel and the bible yes says that he was a man so what was it it was all three i believe that it was god who had sent his visible presence as an angel but manifest as a man and so it was it was somebody that was tangible it wasn't just a spiritual being it was in tangible form that jacob could get a grip on wouldn't you like to be able to sometimes get a grip on things jacob could get a grip on this man and wrestle with him and fight with him what was it that caused the wrestling match i don't know 
uh, we don't read how it works we don't read how the two actually met and that there was any challenge spoken of or any challenge given but all we know is that there was this man that came along and they started wrestling and, and this is where I need to advise you this is where I just need to encourage you as well not every opponent that comes your way is an enemy not 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 every opponent that comes your way is an enemy sometimes it is in not just those times of comfort but sometimes it's in the times of conflict where there's a, a it's like a shell that cracks and something within you emerges something within you is birthed something within you comes out if 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 God is the God of all comfort then you need to trust even those times of conflict that God opens there are times where that we say oh Lord just please love me oh Lord give it and God says strengthen yourself up like he said to the prophet he said what are you doing here stand up on your feet Elijah remember Elijah was running away Elijah what are you doing here oh Lord I'm tired I've just gone through the whole Jezebel thing no get up eat drink God knows the water that we need God knows the bread that we need and sometimes you're in a time of conflict because God knows that that conflict will not crush you that conflict is about to draw out of you an emphasis a part of your character uh, uh, maybe some part of you that has been lying dormant but through that conflict God is about to bring out of you something that is strong something that is powerful something that is needed on the other side of the Jabbok River I want to encourage you not every opponent is an enemy sometimes your greatest opponent can be your greatest ally the Hebrew word uh, when we speak about the, 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 the conjunction and the structure of the sentence the, the Hebrew here with the words wrestled with him can also be understood that Jacob wrestled a man equal to him that's very significant Jacob wrestled a man equal to him equal in what senses we don't know but but one thing we do know was the man actually equal in strength or did the man meet him with equal strength I believe that's more of what we are reading about here and I'll get into that a little bit later I believe that Jacob's opponent met him with equal strength I think that's a very powerful principle you see he was wrestling with God here and or, or, or the angel of God which in some way that is in some mysterious way when the Bible speaks about the angel of God it's a representation of God or a repre representative of God that blows our minds we just don't get, don't get it right but here was this angel that God sent to meet Jacob in equal strength and matched Jacob in every way don't forget now Jacob was a deceiver and I believe that if Jacob was going to wrestle, he wasn't going to wrestle clean. I believe he was going to make a few pot shots there and take a few quick ones and take advantages, throw a bit of dust in the eye and all the rest of it. But here was a being that was sent to meet Jacob equal in every way. I believe for every move Jacob made, this being made a counter move. I, I believe for every push, there was a counter push. And this is why, this is why they had to wrestle till dawn because they were so evenly matched I believe there's great strategy for God yeah they weren't outmatched if he was outmatched the being would have come the angel would have come and just put Jacob on his back straight away there was an evenness of match and God had great wisdom in doing it that way and if we look at it this way then we can see yes in a sense Jacob wrestled with a man yes in, in in a sense Jacob wrestled with an angel yes in a sense Jacob wrestled with God yes because the Bible speaks of all three of those but in another sense in another sense because of the equal force Jacob also wrestled with himself Th this is the principle of Jabbok Jabbok means emptying of self I believe that God is going to bring his people every single saint every single disciple it's a part of your discipleship process God is going to bring you to the opportunity of being emptied of yourself and then meet yourself so that you can wrestle with somebody equal to you 
with every argument that you make there's a counter argument equal to you in your intellect somebody that's thought through the arguments that you've thought through God's gonna meet you you see the, the, this is this is why this river that I've spoken of people cross the Egypt people cross the Jordan like like I spoke of last time but very few people engage that encounter of the Jabbok that, that place where you are stripped bare have you ever known what it's like just to be stripped bare of everything every argument you make you know there's a counter argument every defense you put up there's a counter defense have you ever been in this position where you cannot rely on your spouse you cannot rely on your children they've been sent ahead have you ever been in a situation where you cannot rely on your money your finances your connections your people your experience and it's just the sense of just being so exposed and so bare well you think it may think it's a, t a place of weakness but I want to tell you it's a place of strength because the only things that are going to be stripped away from you are those things that are an illusion of strength but not true strength itself and thus we have Jacob wrestling with this angel and perhaps although he feels so weak and so stripped so evenly matched so exhausted by this stage so tired by this stage yet is in a place of more strength perhaps than he's ever experienced in his entire life because there's an authenticity there's a purity about where he is there's a purity about facing somebody so equal there's a purity about being stripped not having the excuses anymore and Jacob was now finding that he was facing a being that he knew was not just an ordinary man I have seen God face to face you see every battle has got a reason that's why there's a battle people are not going to invest their time their resources their weaponry and their blood in a battle unless there's a reason every fight has got a reason sometimes the reason is just to strut your stuff sometimes it's to show off how much bigger and badder you are than the person you've just bested sometimes there's a title on the line sometimes there's money on the line long time ago the wrestlers used to call it a purse people got confused they said how can two big grown men wrestle over a purse sometimes there's something far deeper when you come to the wrestling match of the Jabbok it's not because there's a title you're not actually wrestling to gain victory over another the waters of the Jabbok have stripped you so that you can engage in the fight against yourself it's victory over yourself the most the most vicious conflicts that you will ever have are with yourself you see if you fight with another you can retreat if you fight with another you can go back to your den and lick your wounds but when you fight with yourself there's no retreat there can only be victory and there are areas of yourself that need to be conquered the Apostle Paul spoke about that he spoke about fighting against the flesh the spiritual man against the physical man or, or, or the carnal man against the spiritual man there are times that you're brought to a place where you realize hey this battle is unlike any other there's there, there, there. I've, got, I've got to reach to depths that I didn't know that I could get to I've got to draw upon strengths that I didn't know were available to me because I know that what I'm doing now is not in my own strength and yes just the beauty of it is that God who will never leave you or forsake you is with you in that battle you may think that you're fighting against God and yes in many senses God is in the wrestling but while he's wrestling you he is loving you while he's wrestling you he's sustaining you while he's wrestling you he's building up into you while he's wrestling you he's blessing you powerful principle about to be unleashed right now these two men wrestled until daybreak now can you imagine what Jacob must have felt after that night and then the Sun starts peeping over the horizon this was a long wrestling match this was a long wrestling he must have been utterly exhausted by this time but now the battle was over daybreak had come 
the wrestling was over can you imagine the sense of relief I, I would just like to know all the things that were exchanged while they were fighting while they were wrestling the things that Jacob was confessing the things that he was crying out the frustration that he had against that being and just how that that angel God himself was just absorbing and taking and how exhausted Jacob must have been now the Sun was coming up poured out not just physically but spiritually all that pent-up anger from years the things that he had been through with Laban his uncle the things that he had been through with Esau his brother the rejection he got from Isaac his father the, the, the comfort he got from his mother the, the many people that he had deceived the things that he had gone through oh boy the washing the emptying out now there was daybreak I, I want to tell you daybreak always comes daybreak always comes there will come a time when the battle is over there will come a time where all you can do is just breathe out as an exhausted warrior and say the fight is now over but it wasn't quite over can you just imagine Jacob hanging on hanging on the sun's coming up but Jacob's still hanging on to his opponent and 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 and, and, and while he was hanging on to his opponent his opponent saw that he wasn't going to win so he just turned around and touched him on the hip dislocated his hip now there was much pain so he was hanging on but he was broken as well he was broken and he was battered hanging on can you imagine he's just sort of now that his hip is is dislocated he's almost sort of hanging around his opponent's neck the, the one that was there to fight with him is now holding him up his opponent says to him the Sun is coming up let go of me I need to go now and Jacob says I will not let go of you unless you bless me you see Jacob realized the Bible makes it very clear it's the one that's greater that blesses the one that's lesser so Jacob knew and understood that the one that he was wrestling with was greater than him that's why he said I will not let you go unless you bless me what more blessing do you want Jacob you've already stolen the birthright from your brother you've already stolen the blessing of the firstborn that blessing has already given you great wealth it's already manifested itself it's already unfolded in your life it's already protected you up until this time what more could you possibly want I want the blessing of the one that wrestles with me I want the blessing of the one that has met me in that time of emptying that time of the Jabbok I will not let you go unless you bless me yet we see I mean Jacob the Bible tells us the reason why he was named Jacob is because when he was born he came out holding on to his brother's heel the holder of the heel and that concept of holding a heel spoke of deception that's he got the name deceiver can you imagine naming your child deceiver but that very thing for which he got a bad name was the very thing for which he was now going to be honored he had the ability to hold on and he held on to God through the emptying process he held on to God through the loneliness he held on to God through the conflict oh Christian brother or sister if there's anything I can tell you if I can advise you if I can counsel you if I can encourage you never let go of God hold on to him even if people accuse you of being a deceiver be tenacious hold on to God so many people have been so quick to let go of God that they've let go of the blessing they've crossed over the the Red Sea and they were blessed for it they've crossed over into the promised land and they've been blessed for it but listen to me very carefully very carefully they've not held on to God through the Jabbok experience they go through a time of conflict and they open their hand and they let their God go hold on to your God tell God Lord I don't understand what this conflict is God I am tired Lord I am exhausted but I can tell you one thing I am holding on and I'm not letting go God until you bless me I got the blessing of my father I've got the wealth of the nations I've got these things that are happening around me but I want 
your blessing, O Most High God. It is your blessing that I'll wrestle with. And we've been through a time of conflict. We've wrestled. And oh God, there, there, there's things that I didn't know about myself. There's things that I had to learn about you. And, and I know that you could have squished me anytime you wanted to. But in your mercy, you've chosen to engage me and meet me with strength that was appropriate. You didn't flatten me with strength that would have overwhelmed me. You, you met me with equal strength. Oh God, I'm exhausted. But still God, I am holding on until I get your blessing your blessing because if I see the value of the blessing of my earthly father how much more the value of the blessing of my heavenly father oh no oh no Lord oh no Lord I don't understand it don't get it but I'll tell you what I'm not letting go I'm not letting go can you imagine being called a deceiver all your life because of something that you did coming out of a womb uh, you didn't just because of that God put his stamp on that child God put his mark on that child that sense of tenacity and everybody else misinterpreted it everybody else misrepresented it they saw him as being a deceiver but God said that's not deception that's tenacity that's tenacity and people named him deceiver and I want to tell you because of the human label that people put on that boy Jacob he became a deceiver. He lived up to what people had named him. But God was about to change that. Because before he blessed him, God asked him, What is your name? That's a very, seems like a very weird thing to ask somebody. You've been wrestling with them all night. You are equally matched. You are equal. And yet you've still got to turn around and say, What is your name? What is your name? The man asked him. And Jacob turned around and said my name is Jacob let me tell you what that must have sounded like in the original language what is your name my name is deceiver I've been a deceiver since my birth I've deceived my brother I deceived my father I, I've deceived my uncle I'm a deceiver that is my name can you see the confession that came from Jacob when he was speaking because now he had been stripped bare there was no reason to put up any facade. There was no reason to put any mask and pretend to be anything other than he was. I am stripped bare. I'm naked. I, I have no ability to pretend anymore. I am a deceiver. You want to know my name? That's me. I'm a deceiver. See, there was one other time in the Bible where Jacob was asked his name and it had to do with blessing. And if you go back to the 27th chapter of the book of Genesis... It was his earthly father Isaac that asked him, What is your name? And the deceiver then turned around and said, My name is Esau. Jacob pretended to be his brother. And because he deceived, he answered and said, He didn't say, My name is Jacob. He said, My name is Esau. And because he pretended, he got the birthright. He got the blessing by deception. But you're not going to get anything from God by deception. When you stand in front of God, you stand bare. There are no fronts. There, there, are, there is no pretense with God. And Jacob knew that. He, he wouldn't dare say to the man he is wrestling with, I am Esau. No, no, no. This was a different kind of blessing. And so he was truthful. He said, I am deceiver. I am Jacob. Now, now I can just imagine. It doesn't say it in the Bible. But, but if you can imagine, he has Jacob with a dislocated hip hanging on the neck of this man he was wrestling with. I am deceiver. There's another person they call deceiver in the Bible, right? I am deceiver. You can imagine the man getting ready to impart the blessing, looking down to him. Jacob looking up to him. And this man says to him, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob. No longer will you be called deceiver. But Israel... For you have striven with God and men, and you have prevailed. No longer will you be known by all the derogatory terms that you were known before. Cheat, liar, thief, adulterer. The, th the things that you were named because of your worldly father, or because of the father of this world, the devil. No longer because of the brands that he's put on you. When I get ready to bless you, 
you will be so changed that even your name will change. You have striven with man, yes. But the reason why you've striven with man is because from birth you had an unfortunate and unfair label put upon you. You have striven with God. But now you've come to know that the God that fights with you doesn't cheat. He fights fair. And He fights mercifully. And He fights in order to love you and protect you, not to defeat you and throw you on your back. And you have prevailed. How have you prevailed? By defeating God? No, it's impossible to defeat God. You've prevailed because you've endured. You've prevailed because you've held on. You've prevailed because you would not let go. And the reason why you would not let go is because something deep within you knew and understood that God is good. God is good. And that is what God wants from you. Is to hold on to Him, though everybody says to you, let go. Job's wife says, curse God to His face and let Him go. But though everybody says, let go, you've held on to God because something deep within you has kept reassuring you that God is good. God is good. God is good. And you've prevailed. Now you've come to a place where you're ready for the Jabbok blessing. You're ready for the Jabbok blessing. You used to be called deceiver, but now you're called Israel. Israel means the prince who prevails. You're a prince. You're a royal priesthood. You're royalty. You've come to this place now where a new level of blessing has opened unto you. Because though it seemed like the whole world was crashing on in on you, all you've done is you've held on to him. And it started with you wrestling him. But now the, the wrestling match has changed. No longer are you wrestling. No longer, are you, But now you're holding on to him. For all your strength. There's no more strength in resisting and fighting and and counter blocking now your strength has been changed now you're holding on to him no oh, saint what a blessed place that is what a blessed place that is when the sun rises and when the fight is over and when the blessing can now get poured forth there are many many sons and daughters of God that don't know that blessing and will never know that blessing because they've given up on their God but not so with you let me encourage you not so with you let it be different with you because you've held on to your God. The sun will rise. There'll come a time where the, co the coolness and the, the, the darkness dissipates, but the warmth and the rays will come. There'll come a time where the fighting and the striving stops, but, and a sense of peace and calm will descend upon you. And here's the difference. There'll come a time where it's your turn to cross over the Jabbok, to cross over to all that which you have sent ahead of you. There'll come a time that you will do it. But you will do so as a different man. You'll do so as a brand new man. Every label the world has put upon you will have no effect on you. But all that will count now is who God has said you to be. And who God has named you to be. And your blessing will now be because of the new name that God has put upon you. And the new name that God has put upon you will be a name of authority. And by that authority you'll be able to unlock the blessings that God has put in your path. You'll be unable to unlock the, the relationships, the finances, all those things. But more importantly than that, the peace and the integrity with which God has called you, the purpose to which God has appointed you, will be unlocked. It would not have been unlocked to the Jacob, but it will be unlocked to the Israel. Because God has placed upon you a new name. Why is your fight so vicious? Why is it so strenuous? Why is it so exhausting? Why do you feel so stripped? Because up for grabs now is a blessing unlike any other. It is a blessing of the new creation. I'm not talking about being born again. I'm talking about walking in that for which you have been born. The new you. Here's my encouragement to you brother or sister. No matter how fierce the battle, never give up on God. Never give up on God. You can let go of anything else. Let go of it. Send it ahead of you. Let it go ahead of you. You're not forfeiting it. You're just sending it ahead. Let go of any, everything else. But you hold on to your God. You see, if Jacob was to fulfill the role and the identity of one of the great leaders of Israel, he couldn't do that as a deceiver and he couldn't do that while he thought of himself as being a deceiver 
He had to be changed authentically. He had to be changed in a way that he knew this is not another mask I'm putting on. It's not another pep talk. It's not another lift your, your chin high. Think of yourself differently. Jacob knew that he was a changed man. And I want to tell you that your fierce battles that you're going through are going to change you. But God, God's camp, Manahem, is overshadowing you. You may feel that you're alone, but you're not. And when the sun rises, when you feel the warmth of that sun dawning upon your face, then my brother, then my sister, you will know that it's all been worth it. May you continue to bless him. May you continue to praise and worship him while you go through these times. Above all, hold on to him. Hold on to him. Hold on to him. Let me pray for you. Lord, my God, my heavenly Father, Lord, there have been times where I have kicked against you, raised my heel. There have been times that I have wrestled against your will. There have been times, Lord God, to my shame that I confess it. But there's been a wrestling. But, oh God, you have met me with equal force. You have not just bulldozed over me, Lord God. But that equal force meant that I would become exhausted. As if you just pushed me down, I would have had to surrender right then. But because I continued to fight, you, you met me with a force that would exhaust me, strip me. But, oh God, bring me to the place where I realize that there is so much more to this than just me. And to rely not on my own strength anymore, but upon you. God, this is the blessing that I speak over any person that may be listening today. If there's any person that is, has been exhausted by the wrestling match any person that has been deflated oh god that's only part of the story the blessing is yet to flow i want to speak forth the sense of tenacity oh god if they have already let go then take them by their hand and let their hand grip you again where is it that they're holding on i don't know if they're holding on around your neck or if they're just holding on to your heel god but oh god let them hold on some more let them hold on until that dawn breaks and until the blessing comes. Strengthen them. Encourage them. Uplift them, my Lord and my God. Let them learn what it means to be a truly new creation in Christ Jesus. We know we receive that when we're born again, but oh Lord, so few of us walk in it. So many of us still battle with the old labels and tags that other people have put on us. Well, the blessing of Jabbok will take care of that. Lord, if there are any that have not yet met their Jabbok, O oh, Father, lead them to it, because it is truly beautiful when the sun shines. Lord, I want to speak your blessing of protection and peace upon your children for the week that lies ahead. Let them continue evermore of your goodness, your grace, and your beauty. For this is who you are. <laughs> 